My favorite director has finally released a film about his life. Oh yeah, I'm excited for this one. Of course, right as I'm about to film, my lightsaber decides to die on me. Hey everyone, welcome to Mr. Teach Film Preach, and if you're a film lover like I am, and you learn from films as much as I do, and you're a Steven Spielberg fan, then you are in the right place. And if you're in the right place, click like down below and subscribe my channel, and while you're down there, comment, let me know, what did you think of Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans? Was this an amazing film and you were so excited for it? Is this the best picture winner right here? What is your favorite Steven Spielberg film? And while you're down there, click like and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit that bell button to notify you when I've released more videos. Today, we're talking about the 2022 drama semi-autobiographical film, The Fablements. Directed by Steven Spielberg, written by Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner. This film is about young Sammy Fableman as he aspires to become a filmmaker after having a great experience in the movie theater as he reaches adolescence. Meanwhile, turmoil at school, but especially at home with his family and his parents' marriage occurs. He explores how the power of films can help him see the truth and how he perceives his life and passion. I have to say Steven Spielberg is my favorite director of all time. The fact that he's doing a movie movie at all, I'm excited. Second of all, a movie that he's doing semi based off of his life, him growing up, I'm interested. Third of all, it is a coming of age story, which is my favorite or one of my favorite genres of films out there. And lastly, this movie is about people being in love with films, about being a filmmaker, about being an artist. That alone hits me straight to the heart. I grew up making home videos, movies, just like Sammy Fableman does in this film with his family, his friends, using people in his life to be actors and help with like the special effects and things like that. I did the same thing. So this movie is so geared towards me. I feel like I can't help but be biased in this film. I am also sentimental, what can I say? A sentimental. First of all, Steven Spielberg directed the hell out of this film. What a wonderful, wonderful vision. He finds ways to tell stories that are sweet, innovative, but also being crowd pleasing and being able to balance art and spectacle and characters all into one. This has to be one of his best films in the last 10, 15 years. When you have a story that's being told about this family and it feels small scale, but he is so visual and so big, this world feels imaginative and colorful and beautiful, seen through the eyes of a child. So you get that childlike innocence throughout this film and this wonderment, but also the harshness of reality at times. And Spielberg balances that so well. And he always has. That's why he is a multiple Oscar winner Winner. He will probably win another Oscar this year. He just knows where to put cameras to capture shots. Characters feel multi-dimensional, realistic. Even if they're in a little bit of a fantasy world at times, they still are grounded. And I love that about Spielberg. The script in this film is spectacular. I mean, he got Tony Kushner to pen this. It's like him and Tony Kushner have this friendship and this beautiful partnership, creative dynamic duo between the two of them. He's written a bunch of Steven Spielberg's films, like from Lincoln to West Side Story. Tony Kushner did an amazing job polishing this script with Steven. The dialogue is awesome. And even more so, the moments without dialogue, where the character of Sammy is looking through his camera, seeing the world, shooting films. So all of Sammy's movies that he tries to create throughout this film is so cool to see. They wrote the plot of this movie being intertwined with Sammy's passion of film and that how powerful film is to this character and what it means to him. This is one of the best scripts of this year. The performances are astonishing. Gabriel LaBelle is awesome as Sammy Fableman. He even kind of looks like Steven Spielberg at times. Like the way he puts himself behind the eye of the camera and he kind of looks at things. I see Steven Spielberg in this performance and what a difficult role with coming of age story. He has to play all these ranges of age from like 12, 13 all the way into like his early 20s and he does it so amazingly. There's a lot of emotional moments in this movie and this character has to teeter on that line of 
being a kid, but like trying to be an adult and then also dealing with this heavy secret that his family has and what that does to him and how he perceives the world. And when he gets out his camera, how does that affect him? Like that's complicated emotions for such a young actor to play. And he handles it so well. So Michelle Williams is phenomenal in this movie. She plays his mother. And apparently when Steven Spielberg first saw Michelle Williams done up talking as his mom in this movie, he cried, he shed a tear. <laughs> Obviously captured a part of Steven Spielberg's mom's spirit in the performance, and she is magnificent. That has been nothing but disrespect from you. I'm your mother! Apparently, they're trying to push her into a best actress category, but she's not the main character in this story. She is a supporting character to Sammy Fableman's story. This is told through Sammy Fableman's eyes, his perspective. It is not a Michelle Williams vehicle. In the best actress category, I don't think she's gonna capture it. I think that's going to Kate Blanchett for Tar. It is an amazing performance. It is magnetic, it is complicated. She is a very complicated character, both loving and kind and sweet, but also selfish and a little bit airy and has some complicated relationships with her children because of what happens between with her and her husband. You're not sure if you're ever, if you're fully ever on her side or if you will sympathize with her. It's so layered and beautiful at the same time, but also have this dark undertones to her character too. Paul Dano as the father, who is amazing. He's having a hell of a year playing the Riddler in the Batman. And then this two completely opposite roles, you really see his range this year. And I think he's just spectacular. You can't just love something, you also have to take care of it. It's more important than your hobby. Can you stop calling it a hobby? It doesn't have as much to do in this film as Michelle Williams as the mother. It's not so much geared emotionally towards the father, especially as the character is more analytical and more mechanical and more methodical than Michelle Williams' airy artistry uh, mother. The clash between the two of them is really what is the driving tension and conflict throughout this whole film. I think the standout performance in this movie is Judd Hirsch, which is crazy because he's in it for like eight minutes, two scenes but they are the most impactful scenes in the movie. He gives an Oscar-worthy monologue performance at one point. Family, art, it'll tear you in two. How he connects with Sammy and the things that he says are poignant to the character. I'm like getting emotional talking about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it just got me. It was just so well written and so well executed. I loved when he showed up in the film and I wish we got a little bit more of him in this movie. But when he is on screen, he knocks it out of the park, home runs all the way. The whole cast in this movie brought their A game. I mean, they're in a Steven Spielberg film. Cinematography by Kaminsky is amazing. Set in the 1950s, 60s. And it is so beautifully shot. Production design by Rick Carter. This movie is gorgeous looking. The costumes are brilliant. The sound effects in this movie, oh man. It is scored beautifully by John Williams and a longtime collaborator with Steven Spielberg. It is an emotional roller coaster of a ride and it is a two and a half hour film. And that's maybe one of the downfalls is a little long at times considering this is a coming of age story. There's only about 10 minutes where this movie seems to drag just a little bit. This movie is almost perfect and beautiful all at once. All these different tones from his movies are kind of sprinkled all throughout this film. Like at one point there's a shot of Michelle Williams and there's rain coming down on the window. It's so reminiscent of the scene in the Jeeps in Jurassic Park and the tone, the lighting and everything, paying homage to himself throughout his own personal film. And I think that's just so cool. The last shot of this movie, I had a grin just from ear to ear. I was just smiling so hardcore. I was so happy. There's some great breaking of the fourth wall in this movie and that's one of the things in the last shot of the film it does. A gorgeous little wink. Like I said, this movie was made for me. It was like Steven wrote this film for himself but it is the story of my life. Late to family dynamics, being in love with film and how obsessed with movies one can become and how important it is to find that passion but balance it also with a family life. Sammy, this character, gets accused multiple times in this movie of being selfish and putting his love of films before his family. And even though he denies it, you can see from his actions and the look on his face and the way he sees certain scenarios that, man, he might actually love films more than his family. And he struggles with that. And I so relate to that. I relate to it as someone who's an artist. I think Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner explored that idea 
beautifully. This is Steven Spielberg's most personal film to date. There's some actual great comedic moments in this film, surprisingly funny at times, while also being realistic and true to the characters. I recognize that I am a little bit biased towards this film considering the subject matter is so up my alley, but still, I think even if I remove myself from that situation, I can look at this film and go, it is brilliantly executed, well written. I don't really have that many complaints about it. Just a lot of high, high praise. Steven Spielberg still has his magic touch and he proves again with this movie why he is one of the best directors of all time. This was one of my most anticipated films of the year and it ended up paying off beautifully. It'll for sure be on my top 10 list. I hope people go and check it out so they continue to make movies like this, original scripts, original stories. I can't quite give this movie an A plus and B the top of the class is just not quite there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Steven Spielberg's new amazing film, The Fablemans, an A. What did you think of The Fablemans? Was this one of your favorite films of the year? Was this a modern Steven Spielberg masterpiece? And what is your favorite Steven Spielberg film? I would love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. And while you're down there, click like and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to hit that bell button to notify you when I release more videos. Thank you for joining me today on Mr. Teach Film Preach. I hope you had a great time. Come back and check out some other reviews like She Said, Strange World, and the Banshees of Inishirin. Come back and check out some other videos and we'll see you on the next one. Stay focused, stay awesome, and as always, let's get taught.